Hello, and welcome to today's Saratech enablement session. My name is Andrea Hall, and I'm the Customer Relationship Manager here at Saratech, and I will be your host today. Presenting today, we have Kyle Vanderstel, and he's a Senior Team Center Architect here at Saratech. And he's going to be talking to you about Active Workspace within Team Center 4.1. Next slide. Our sessions run about uh, 30 minutes each. They are all recorded and posted to our Saratech YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our past sessions there. Twice a month, we meet right here to learn about tips, tricks, new and old features that'll help you in your everyday tasks. This is an open forum, so if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, please just type them into the questions box over to the right-hand side, and I will kindly interrupt Kyle and just let him know about your comments and questions. Um, you are also welcome to email us after the session if you have any questions, and we'll be happy to follow up with you. Uh, and with that, I am going to pass it over to Kyle. Okay, I'd like to introduce myself very quickly. My name is Kyle Vanderstill, as Andrea said, uh, Senior Team Center Architect with Saratech. Uh, been in the Team Center space for quite a number of years, probably 20 plus, um, acting uh, in an architect uh, mode in, in most recent times. What we're gonna do today is kind of talk to you a little bit about Active Workspace 4.1. Uh, it's a very specific release. Um, it does supersede uh, its predecessors. Um, uh, most users have experience with the Active Workspace 3.x version, uh, and this is a significant improvement over that. So uh, one of the things you want to do is just give you a brief introduction. I'll take you through a few slides, uh, and then I'm going to take you into the product Excel itself and give you a short uh, demonstration on what it looks like, uh, how to get around, what you can see, uh, and things that you can accomplish with it. Um, a lot of the most recent changes that have been introduced into 4.1 deal primarily with uh, user efficiency. Uh, we did that through changing the layout and styling. Uh, there's significant performance enhancements that have been made. Um, one of the uh, nice parts about 4.1 is it is adoption, adopting uh, many of the newer technological advancements that have occurred, which and now allows it to be much more uh, efficient and increased performance over, over its predecessors. It does have a, a different look and feel, and all of which is kind of designed to uh, stay, save steps and, and reduce the number of clicks that, that users often experience. You'll find that menus are only one layer deep. Um, there's no need to traverse through multiple series of menus, particularly this was a little bit troublesome using the Team Center Rich Client, which many users will be transitioning away from if they use Active Workspace. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned uh, briefly that we have improved uh, performance. If you're in a, a table mode and you're looking at things, you know, in a kind of an Excel format, uh, the displays are very fast and very quick. And overall, the experience is more accustomed to uh, a standard web uh, experience. So uh, things like breadcrumbs, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Uh, all of that's kind of used here in, um, in uh, development of this particular interface. Uh, other shortcuts are geared towards, um, you know, when you create new objects in Active Workspace, you can immediately, in the same step, you know, add, uh, you know, data set files from your desktop. Um, so a lot of these kind of shortcuts have, have been enhanced and, um, this, and, and made part of uh, uh, 4.1. There are uh, updates to styling and the layout. You'll notice that there will be changes to colors and a reorganization of where things are. Again, the whole idea is to make it easier to understand and more productive. We've also included uh, additional capabilities for uh, uh, subscriptions, uh, being able to be aware and receive updates as things uh, go through their life cycle. Um, one thing that we wanna mention here that with the improvements of 4.1, uh, 
um, a number of team center applications um, are incorporated and are used with uh, are available here. So things like systems engineering, build of material planning, schedule manager, workflow, design manage, electrical design management, visualization, program planning. Now this is not an exhaustive list, um, but improved application uh, capabilities are now part of active workspace. And the plan going forward is to keep those there. Um, I've had conversations with, with uh, Siemens uh, product development managers and there are capabilities, for example, with some of these applications that you will find in active workspace that you may not find in the rich client. So th that by no means uh, is that to say that the rich client's going away, because it's not. It plays a very fundamental and important uh, aspect of Team Center. However, what we are saying is that there will be functionalities for various applications found in active workspace that may not be found in uh, in the rich client. So this is a significant move forward. Um, as I should also mention that uh, 4.1 requires either uh, Team Center 11.6 or Team Center 12.1 uh, to go forward with this interface that you'll see here in a minute. I should point out also that there is a 4.0 release out there that would not be the one that would be equivalent to 4.1. They are they are fundamentally different. So Team Center 4.1 is what you'll see today, and the capabilities are incorporated there. The other thing that is important and noteworthy here is um, the one of the major advantages to going with Active Workspace also includes um, costs that might be incurred by uh, uh, IT department because uh, there's no distribution of software. Everything works and functions within the browser, whether it be a Chrome or Firefox um, or Safari, that all of these functions that you'll see displayed today are, are going to function within the browser. There's no additional supporting or third-party software. There's no plugins. So <clears throat> Active Workspace was built using the newest technologies, so it eliminates a lot of the uh, um, software support um, um, actions and activities that typically go on with deployment of cl uh, clients. So there's a significant cost savings to this, so which is important to keep in mind um, for any uh, organization. Hey, Kyle, we have our first question. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Matthew, would, Matthew would like to know, uh, what about manufacturing process planner? Team Center Manufacturing is supported in Active Workspace. Um, I haven't had any direct exposure to it, so I can't say uh, precisely if it's 100% supported, but it is something I can look into and provide some feedback on. Okay, great. So Matthew, we will follow up with you after the session um, with a little bit more detail to that. Thank you. So uh, taking a brief look at uh, Active Workspace, here's one view of it. This is a snapshot taken from a Chrome browser. When I give you the demonstration, I'm going to do it in Firefox because the coloring is just a little bit different. You'll notice, though, um, I'm, I've highlighted some areas here um, in red uh, just to indicate that these are some of the first changes that you'll notice with Active Workspace. And these are pinned menus. Pinned meaning they're always there. Um, so the, the, the idea was these are high function uh, return to menus. So we keep them there. We pin them there and they provide very nice uh, shortcuts and uh, allow you to get around and find your, and navigate around the, the browser much more quickly. So for example, this is the upper left quadrant of the screen or of the page, and you'll notice that there's a home and a folder and an inbox. And if I click on any one of those buttons, it takes me directly there. Previously, you always kind of had to go to the top menu and then kind of work your way back down through the tiles. Um, and in this, as in similar releases, Active Workspace, it kind of uses this tile format. Um, you can add to them and take them away. You can reposition them if you want to, you know, personalize your desktop a little bit. Um, this is the upper right corner. Uh, I mentioned earlier that colorization is kind of used here. So, for example, uh, in the top portion here is my standard search screen. You'll see that the items are in blue. Uh, meaning these are my default search criteria. If I change one of them, like I did here, I went from any category to file. I want to look for just files. So it'll color and, and, and retain that color 
so that when you do the searches, you, it'll, it'll show you what you just searched for. So there's no question about that. And then I'll demonstrate that again in, in just a little bit. This is the lower left-hand quadrant, quadrant of the screen. Um, so th this is where you can change your groups and roles, which I show right here. Um, you can change your, uh, this is where you do your sign in and sign out. Um, the other thing that's kind of handy too is that they put this uh, help button down here and it can very quickly show you what release and what version has been deployed. So if tickets are opened and you know they always ask what version of this or that, and it's immediately available right here. So I have that highlighted. Um, another thing that you can do is as you come back with a set of search results, you know, if that set is rather large, um, you can actually search within those results kind of narrow things down. I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. But this is a new feature and the on the right hand side, um, this chart by is also new with 4.1. Previously, uh, Active Workspace kind of decided for you what could, you could search on in this panel here, um, but we've enhanced that a little bit and you can search on additional attributes on those objects if you chose, if you choose to. That's your search, your find in content and I'll, I'll show you what that means. So with that, let's go jump over to uh, Active Workspace, and here it is. So it was similar to the slides I show you. I'm in Firefox this time. You'll notice the use of colors is here, um, and, and the different colors mean different things. So there's actions in light blue, um, you know, more static things in the darker blue. And um, so let's go through and just do a few things here. Going to focus this initially on basically search criteria. So if I just put in two, uh, I'm gonna put in the letters S and T, I'm gonna hit a return, and then you can see that I found 34 results, right? So there's 34 items that have the content of ST in it. Um, it comes back and it says, well, I've determined that that type is an attribute on these objects. So it does an immediate kind of categorization for me. I can see out of these 34 items, uh, 17 of them are item revision, uh, seven are an NC tool revision. If I click on that one, then it immediately does a filter for me. Uh, as I mentioned before, it kind of does a breadcrumb thing across the top. So you can see that there's seven found for ST, and then you know um, I'm filtering now on the NC tool revision. If I want to back up from that, I just hit the X, and it takes me right back to where I was. So it's really easy. Um, the filter criteria bar immediately shows now. Um, it didn't do that before. Uh, now it does, so it's immediately available for viewing and selection. You'll notice that the color here on the left matches the columns here on the right. So again, they're trying to use kind of a, an additional layer of, of filtering uh, to find things. Um, I mentioned too that uh, when you have a set of results, you can search within those results. So if I come in and say, all right, show me everything that has, you know, 77 in it, and I hit a return, and it says, okay, out of that 34, four of them now have 77 in the, either the name or the ID. A couple other things that are, are kind of interesting here is I can turn on highlighting, and when I do that, uh, Team Center tells me where it found the matches, right? So my first selection was searching on the letters ST, and then my secondary filter or selection was 77. So it shows me where it is, um, which can be really handy too, particularly if you end up with a large number of data, um, you know, things can get kind of unwieldy. Um, so it's just a handy way of, of, of finding what you're looking for. Another thing that we can do here is, um, we can in, in, uh, immediately kind of enable the uh, revision uh, rules. So if I, as I search on something here, my revision rule right now is set to latest by creation date, right? So you'll notice that I got one object back that, make, that matches this particular criteria. So I was rather specific this time. And it came back and it said, oh, okay, here's this item. Um, it's a item revision, it has some attachments to it, but it's more importantly, it's revision B. Right, so all I need to do now, if I change my my search criteria or my revision rule and then search again, then it shows me the same item, but now it's showing me revision A. So this 
these these rev rules that were previously not even shown here are now right underneath the search box and are easily uh, accessed. Um, let's go ahead and do something here. Make sure I stay on time. I'm going to create a document. Um, it's pinned right there to my my home. Um, it takes me into uh, an add uh, configuration right here. Um, it auto generates the ID number, which of course in the Team Center world is always configurable. So I'll just provide it a name, my uh, document. And the thing that's kind of interesting here is that at the same time that I create my object, I can also attach a file, right? So as I come in here and look at, uh, let's see what I have here. I'll just grab a, uh, a Word file here of some kind. Um, perhaps that one right there. I'll say OK. So it immediately attaches the file as I create my document item. I can do a drag and drop here as well, which is not available in previous versions. So I could go out to my desktop uh, folder and I can just drag and drop a file here. I'll just click the add button, wait for it to create the document, and then you'll notice that it gives me a little flag. My document is now created, it has my attachments. If I decide to go and add another file, um, I can easily do that. I could say, well, how about this uh, PDF file right there? I'll say, okay. And then I can just click add, and then it immediately adds that, 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 uh, that PDF file. In this particular case, since it's a viewable type file, Team Center knows that, and it immediately shows me the image of, of what I added, and it will show me this thumbnail, um, um, as it uh, because I added it as a PDF file, could have added a a, a JT file or a, or a uh, you know a PNG file for graphics. But I just wanted to show that this capability of creating documents and then at the very same time um, a, uh, adding the, the a, a data set is is very easy to do. So let's do a little bit of searching, slightly different this time. So I'm going to search for ST again, um, and I can view my data kind of in different uh, arrangements. So um, Team Center lets me uh, select the different kinds of perspectives that um, I can see. I can see it in tabular format, or I can see it uh, more individually. So for example, everything here is Right now, I'm in list with summary. So as I select any one of these items, uh, the right-hand side of the page is my summary. And But I can change this. I can go to a table view and do it here. And the interesting thing is in this perspective, um, you'll notice that I have another set of menus that showed up on the right. And these uh, the first five um, are persistent. They'll always be there. And as I mentioned earlier, that you don't have to kind of navigate and traverse through menus as you did, you know, with other clients. So as I click on new, it will tell me what I can and can't do uh, underneath do. So I can create other items or trace links. If I click on edit, um, I can start edit mode, which I'm going to do right now. I don't know how well it's showing up, but each one of the editable fields is now highlighted. And the ones that I don't have access to, for example, uh, item number 71, it has a release status, so I can't, I can't edit it. Same with these other ones that carry a different release status. But I can come in here, and I can say, and I'll just type in a, a word here. Um, and just to illustrate that I can you know, key in those values, and I could do the same um, for anything down here. I can put in, you know, change me. And then I can just simply over here say, you know, save my edits. I, I'm only showing this from the standpoint of you can kind of bulk edit or table edit multiple objects at the same time. That can be a real time saver, particularly if you have a lot of uh, changes to make on, on multiple objects. So that's kind of handy. The other thing I'd like to show you is a little bit about uh, what you see in a kind of a product structure mode. So what I did here is I searched on a specific part number. So 000181, uh, two items came up. Um, this is the one I'm interested in here. 
So as I, you'll notice that as I hover over it, it gives me this little open button. This is similar to uh, previous versions. So it's going to open this object, and it immediately knows that it is a uh, a product structure. It knows that it's uh, it's an assembly, so it presents the data to me as such. Um, I can look at it in different kinds of ways. I can look at it with tree with summary. So if I treat tree with summary, as I select the items on the left, it will give me a uh, an image. It will give me some summary data on the right. Um, one thing I should point out is that uh, when viewables are available, uh, Team Center will immediately show you those uh, viewable files and allow you to, to manipulate them. Keep in mind that um, with Active Workspace 4.1, um, we can do client-side rendering um, as these viewables are, are made available and attached to the individual items. So when I'm in this mode here, um, notice that I got a new menu here at the top. So there's different things that I can do um, in this viewing mode. So I can rotate, um, I can do section cuts. Um, if I, as I create one, this is not a particularly interesting uh, part to section, but if I choose the, the uh, ZY perspective, then I can slide my uh, section through and I can, I can retain those um, as I want to and, and make them a, per, uh, a part of the, uh, the, uh, the information that could be useful, particularly if you were authoring a change and you wanted to provide some markup. Um, the other thing that would be also available, I'm a little short on time, would be if I had a PDF file, um, I could mark up the PDF file right here. Keep in mind, I don't need any special licensing other than the Team Center license to do this. I don't need a view. Uh, I don't need a CAD license. Um, I might not even be a CAD user. And if I don't even have the CAD application, whether it be NX or SolidWorks, it really doesn't matter. What What's available to me is the viewable in images that came from CAD, but that allows me to do my view and my markup right here within the right here within the browser. So if I go back to uh, tree view, again, the configuration context is available as well. Um, so as I sit here, you'll notice that I have um, a revision B uh, of this particular part in my structure. So if I change that um, my configuration status to to a different one, then it will redraw my structure. And you know now I'm looking at the, the A rev. So I, I only illustrate this because um, I'm showing you that a lot of this capability. A lot of the bomb management capability that you found originally in the rich client is now available right here in the in the active workspace uh, and additionally I don't have any effectivity set or unit effectivity set but those would be available here as well um, if I wanted to see it and, and uh, view my data that way um, one other thing I did want to show is you'll notice that across the top my search thing kind of went quiet um, team center tries to uh, active workspace tries to kind of maximize the data that you have on the screen uh, of course i can view in with the standard uh, web uh, viewing capabilities but if i click on that i want to show you a little bit too about what you might see from a uh, workflow uh, standpoint so i i'm just searching on ecn i i know i have one change object out there i don't have a whole lot of data in this environment. But as I look at this change notice, I'm gonna hit the little open arrow, I'm gonna go directly to the change object, and Team Center is gonna share with me some information that it knows. You'll notice that I have a workflow link right here at the top, and as I click on it, it can report back to me um, where it's been in workflow, um, what it's doing in workflow, and where it can go. I can see right now that it's with user Ed, this is our Ed engineer, it's been with Dawn Designer, and it's also captured all of the text that were entered as the item went through workflow. So um, if you're interested in following uh, an item, you can do that very easily. Um, you'll notice that in these, this graphical representation down at the bottom, green items have been completed, uh, orange items is where it currently is, and then blue is where it potentially could go, depending upon this is a condition uh, process. So um, I have three possible outcomes. I can rework, 
I can approve or I could reject and it would go on and workflow, you know, however the workflow design has been done. So I only show that because at any item in Team Center, whether it be a, a part or a document, or in this case, an ECN, that you'll be able to determine where it is in the workflow with simply one click. So I don't have to open up any new applications. I don't have to go to new pages or anything like that. It's all right here. Um, so I wanted to show that as well. Um, some of the things that you can do, um, as I mentioned earlier, all the menus are just one layer deep. So you don't have to kind of navigate through. So if I click on the view button, uh, or the share button, I can see I can copy the link, I can export, I can print. If I go to manage, uh, I can pin to my home. Um, that's something that's very easy to do. I'll, I'll just select that right now. I'll show you what that means in a second. Um, I could submit this item to a workflow under edit. Um, I can start edit or check out depending upon what my privileges are. So all these menus here are kind of pinned. Um, they're only one level deep, but it really has enabled, I think, more functionality at the same level, or they've kind of flattened everything out so you don't have to traverse m multiple menus uh, in order to find data. Uh, remember, I just, uh, I, I pinned it to my home. So as I go to my home button, you'll notice that the item, if I back up here a little bit, there's my change notice right there. So um, I made it part of my home. If I go to that item again, um, I can go back and say uh, manage and say unpin from home. Uh, same works with uh, uh, making things your favorites. So I can say add to favorites. And as you recall, or maybe not, I have a button up here um, where I have uh, my favorites, which is right down here. Change my focus a little bit. So as I go to my uh, my favorite button right there, then the item immediately shows there. So it's a real easy way of kind of remembering where you were, um, retracing your steps, if you will. Uh, another thing that you can do here, which you could do uh, earlier in Active Workspace, is uh, as an item is selected, I can come over here and I have different uh, ways to open an item. So I can open it right here in the same page, in a new window, in a new tab. Uh, and then, of course, if it was CAD data, I could open it in NX or Solid Edge or SolidWorks, you know, whichever connectors that I had plugged into my to my environment. So um, it knows that this is a part with uh, data attached. So it gave me the option of opening it uh, in in my CAD application. So um, that you know that that's kind of an overview of Active Workspace and some of the new capabilities that you find that you didn't have with its. Uh, previous versions. Um, so with that, I will uh, conclude my demonstration and um, give the time back over to Andrea. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great job. I know there's lots and lots more that you could have gone over, but um, because of time, uh, we are going to cut it off here. If there's anything else that you would like to see as an attendee um, in future sessions, please be sure to email us at marketing at saratech.com and we will be sure to uh, try to fulfill those um, requests. Um, again, thank you so much for attending. If you could just stay for about 30 seconds after I end this session, uh, we do have a quick survey where uh, you could just let us know how we did today and you could also put your suggestions there. Uh, make sure that you follow us on social media, especially YouTube. Uh, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get to see uh, firsthand all of the uh, videos that we post as well. We do these long videos like we did today, about 30 minutes, and then we also have shorter videos. And again, if you ever have any suggestions for those, we really would love to um, hear about that. And uh, thank you again for attending and taking time out of your day to be here with us, and we hope you have a wonderful day.